Um, hi, I think it's five seconds to ten. So if anyone else joins, he misses my awesome introduction. Um, to keep it short, hi, my name is Chris. Um, besides organizing FrostCon, um, I'm a DevOps engineer um, as a freelance consultant. So I do cloud migrations. Um, uh, many things in terms of Agile, um, and I basically teach, train, live and breathe Puppet. Um, doing this for organizations from owning two data centers to uh, renting one or two servers. Um, so basically all sizes. Um, that's probably all of, about me. Um, most companies always face a problem with less sys administrators, we don't find them, we have no idea where to hire them. Um, so we need to find another way um, how to actually manage our infrastructure. Um, some companies have the idea, let's do Puppet, others want to do Ansible or um, other equivalents. Um, I think Puppet is a great idea. Um, Ansible is a cool idea too, but has other advantages. Um, so I always tell them, yeah, let's do Puppet is a good idea. Um, Yes, so the problem is when most companies start, um, same for when I started with Puppet, with an open source project, um, it's pretty much looking into the documentation and being like, yeah, we can do it like this to install something. Um, and then we continue with our code. So um, yeah, we just keep adding stuff to our one file. Um, then we do this again. Um, and so we have huge files, nothing is structured, nothing is organized. Um, good thing about Puppet, it lets you do this. Um, it works. Um, the problem is your colleagues probably want to kill you after some days or some weeks into this. Um, easily said, things got really weird. Um, so, for example, we changed one little thing and a totally different application started to break uh, just because of we didn't even know that was linked or something like that. Um, and again, Puppet is very flexible. It lets you do all kinds of crazy shit. Um, it just doesn't tell you that it's not clean. Um, so feel free to mess around with it. It can totally break a computer. It can totally make it awesome. Um, but... Uh, yeah, if you just start to do this, um, probably even you will not understand what you tried to develop a few months back. Uh, yeah, so it got really weird to be honest. So um, especially when you do this in a in a cloud environment where machines boot up when another one failed. So no matter if public or private cloud, one machine fails, we we just set up a new one. You don't know where things are coming from. Um, so you're pretty much lost with what you actually developed and you hope that things get stable. Um, it's not a good idea. I don't know, any one of you already did Puppet? Do you understand the problem? <laughs> or did you have the problem, to be honest? <laughs> Looks like you get a yes to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, then some great people had the idea, okay, we can use Hira um, to actually at least get the data out of what we developed. Um, so we started to create huge YAML structures, um, edit eYAML, edit yet another KMS integration for Amazon AWS or some things like that. And again, it got huge and no one had any idea where things are coming from, like duplicated layers um, that actually did the totally same thing, for example, um, or merge strategies that were not understood. Um, so actually, we again had no idea where the data was coming from, just because of too many people were involved and too many people actually tried messing around and doing stuff on their own without really understanding how the infrastructure was built. Um, so yeah, nope, um, didn't really work at all. Um, then we had the idea in the operations team um, to actually redefine what Puppet actually is. Um, so all in all, Puppet is nothing else than code um, distributed, uh, like used to actually de not not build an application, but to deploy your service. Um, so what did we do with code? We started to do use patterns. This actually should mean frameworks on the second slide. Um, I just messed that up. Um, so we started to 
invent frameworks on how we actually could build our application um, to actually make it easier um, and to make it understandable for everyone else. So some people say, yeah, you could add comments, but um, yeah, first of all, you need to read the comments you have uh, developed, written, whatever. Second, you actually need still need to understand how it's all linked. Um, so comments will tell you what's going on in this specific line of code, but not how it's working all together. Um, yes, yeah, so this is why we have patterns, frameworks. Um, and what I'm going to tell you um, about is actually the most common framework. Um, so if you look into the Puppet Labs uh, documentation, um, there's a very cool presentation about this as well. Um, you should highly recommend watching it. Um, I'm use, going to tell you about roles, profiles, and um, yeah, modules, basically. Um, so actually, how things tried to, to split up the... Um, administrators from the team leads or development managers and the actual managers of the application so basically the business view um, when you compare it we have the business view we have what the application actually is and then we have the administrator who actually cares what happens so for example the CEO of a company doesn't really care at all what's what's on the server as long as the application is running or what he wants to do is working um, the team lead actually cares that the application really is deployed as it is. For example, that you, you need a database for this application and stuff like this. And the administrator really cares that the database is installed as expected and hardened and whatsoever. Uh, what other people just don't need, don't even want to know. Um, yeah, speaking about Puppet, everything is pretty much a module. Um, you can write your own manifest, but as soon as you start a separate code, everything is a module. Um, again, Puppet, if once you get it, it's really, really easy. You just need to structure it. And pretty much the only way to structure code till now is modules. Um, yeah. So how do we do this um, with this views? Um, the most basic concept, as explained, is this. Um, for every application you have, I call it X, Y, Z, because if it's easy, um, you create your own module. One module could be Postfix, one module could be Apache, could be Nginx, could be HAProxy, all kinds of software you actually have in your data center. Important, as soon as you, for example, have Tomcat and you have your own applications, please don't try to build a generic module for Tomcat application or something like this, um, because, if, again, you don't know where code is coming from. So uh, create one module for Tomcat and then one module per application. If it's just installing a WAR file, that's fine. Um, but you actually know what's going on if you look into it, so just as you look into it. So it's very straightforward and you really know where to find your code. Um, then you have profiles, which pretty much abstract this. So profile pretty much tells the server or is intended to tell you Okay, for my application, um, web firewall, whatever, I need Nginx and I need HAProxy and I need um, a Tomcat on this machine. So in the profile, you really include all the modules you actually need in your application. Uh, speaking of, yeah, so include Apache, include Nginx, include HAProxy, but nothing else. Profiles don't really implement code, they just include code. So everything that's really to the resources you have in Puppet is in those real, real modules. As soon as you realize, um, yeah, but this is just a hotfix, create a new module, please. So people will understand what you try to do. Um, and it's easily, you can easily figure it out. Um, yes, you can also use, the point is you can use multiple profiles um, in one run but then you have roles which should pretty much describe a server which is one to one to one server so you can reuse a role on five servers but the role should only be like one server should only install one role as soon as you realize you need a second role 
you have by definition actually invented a new role. Um, in the original talk, there was something like something couldn't be a kangaroo and a lion at the same time with a very nice picture of a lion and a kangaroo Photoshop. Um, yes, something couldn't be a lion and a kangaroo at the same time. Don't use two roles on one machine because of that's per definition not possible. But a role can include multiple profiles. So in every role you have include profile A, profile B, profile C, but nothing like include Apache again. So you have this, I have a very nice, I created, let me see if I can find this picture actually. Um, I created a very nice um, chart about this, um, which actually displays the um, hierarchy. Let me see if I can get this up real quick. Um, this one. Okay, here it is. Um, where is the, oh, there it is. Um, let it load. Present. Um, yeah, whatever. Um, let me zoom in here. Okay. Um, so on top, if you start to actually deploy something, you have one of your servers, which needs to get deployed. Then the server should actually include one role. One server, exactly one role. As you can see here, one role can be used on two different servers, but you don't have one server which actually implements two roles. Um, by doing this, you really have a very strict separation of what's actually going to be on this machine. And for example, your top level manager can actually go and say, okay, this is role um, application one and I need application one. So you can say, okay, deploy this application one role. And he ex knows exactly what is on this machine. Questions to this? Nope. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm, okay. So he's telling that roles and profiles, um, the the exact definition is a little bit fuzzy. Um, and yeah, I will come back to this. Um, I'll actually do it right now. Um, awesome. So feel free to ask questions. I was a bit hurried in the last days when I tr actually need to do this talk. Um, Yes, so a role is really the business definition of what's going to be deployed. So it's totally business logic. It's nothing like real code. It's nothing like what's going to be on the server. It's nothing related to application. It's pure business logic. So when you go to your executive, he should understand what this role is actually deploying on the server. It's nothing technical. So if he knows about Apache, well, great, you have a great boss, but um, it still shouldn't be in the role. Then on the next level, you have the profiles. So for example, if you have one application as a microservice that should be deployed, you have the profiles. And for example, this application needs a database, this application needs an Apache, and it needs the actual application code. So those three things, database could be one profile, um, the actual application server, the middleware could be one profile, and the actual application is one profile. Um, so in the role you say, okay, this is pure business logic. And then we actually include the application logic. So we say, okay, we need a database for this. So this profile could be called database. Then we need the actual web application server and we need to install the actual application. And this is profiles. So the project manager in this terms should understand what actual profiles do. So still, this is no code implementation of it but the project manager should know what parts of the application are needed. So you abstract from CEO to project manager and then on the modules where you actually really implement what's going to be installed, this is 
some people call it DevOps, some do this in the operations team, some say, okay, our developers do this and operations just deploys it. This is totally up to you. But to this stage, like from roles to profiles and to service, no actual implementation code should be written. This is purely inc include logic or contains in the new versions of Puppet. Nothing else. Yeah. <coughs> yes. So uh, for the roles, uh, for the um, actual mapping from roles to the server um, in, the, in the cloud environment, we actually created our own init script where we said um, we actually set a fact, which is uh, the actual name of the role. So then in the actual, we have one where our node definition is three lines of code, which is say default node install role fact name our server role. And then the server figures out everything else by himself. Um, on the other hand, you could use an ENC, for example, the foreman, where you, um, in the interface, you say what, what classes should be included on the service, and you just say role double point, double point, name of my server role. That should be the, the way you, do, you go to actually deploy service. If you mess this up and you start to add multiple roles, it's, it starts to get messy again because you don't know what's coming from where. And still, and especially because of Puppet as a state machine, as soon as you start to declare resources multiple times, um, you will get errors. And you don't really know where they're coming from as soon as you start to include multiple things um, which could affect the same server or the same service. Um, so, so you're asking, uh, what if a role, um, has several meanings to the business? Oh, so you're asking if the definition of a, an actual application is rather a role, but not a profile. Okay. Yeah, so basically um, in this pattern, please always use this hierarchy. So if you have one role which only includes one profile, feel free to do it. Most people have one profile which is called base, where you just do something like NTP and hardening and stuff like this. So in most cases, you always install the base profile and your application profile. So you have at least two profiles. But um, if you start to just skip a row, um, people cannot really understand what's going on because if they can't really follow those lines and see what's actually happening. Yeah. What's it good? Uh, some of the, okay. And then in the modules, um, the profiles really just include modules again. So other modules. And they actually do things with the resources. And very important, as soon as you start to create modules for applications, one resource should only be used in one module. So as soon as you have a resource which is managed by two different modules, you should start thinking about how to refactor this, that this is not possible. One module should really focus or care about one application and all of its resources. So it might need to be a bit more generic with this module, but it really helps you to not have errors while deploying a service. And this could be production effective. Like it could really kill your production deployments because of if you have an error in production because of this resource is already managed, but it's not on staging or somewhere else, you really kill your production deployment, which is not so good, I assume. Yes. Um, oops. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you're telling about the anchor pattern in Puppet um, and that you should be really 
cautious on what way you include things with resources. Um, especially starting with Puppet 4, I really encourage you to use contains um, because of um, yeah, in Puppet it's important to know that the order of things getting executed is very random. So if you have install Vim and then install Apache, it's in no way guaranteed that it installs Vim first and then Apache. Um, so people started to find ways around ordering. One is the anchor pattern where you said, okay, I create a block and then I say, okay, when this block starts, the next thing is this, next thing this, next thing this, and then end, like end this anchor. It was a good hotfix, Puppet encouraged to use it. Um, and in version 4, they actually added an alternative to include, which is contains. Um, so if you use contain, um, Puppet really encapsulates all the code you have into the class. So as soon as the class is actually done, all the code inside this class is also executed. Um, so the class is really the, the anchor. Yeah, yeah. Instead of include Apache, you say contains Apache, and then uh, you can really use the class for ordering. So you say class one before class two, and everything in class one is executed before class two. If you use include, that's not the case. Yes. It's very, yeah, it's very good. Um, the only problem we had was uh, with three, everyone didn't give a shit about um, um, integers and strings and starting with Puppet 4, it all got very type sensitive. Um, so, um, so this was quite of a mess because of some things just stopped working because of the type sensitivity. Um, but especially that was a good reason to start also writing aspect tests and everything got way better. Um, so I encourage you to actually go from Puppet 3 to 4 because of um, you get to know or you realize testing is a good idea and you actually start doing it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you have two applications both needing Apache and yeah, and you don't know how to deal with it. So basically Apache is um, in this matter is a module. I don't know can you really can you see this it's let me look for yeah probably. <laughs> Um, so Apache is really a module, and two profiles could include Apache. In Puppet, um, as soon as a class is included, it's included, so it's in. So even if you have a role which includes both profiles, Apache is only installed once. Um, Hira is for data. So every data you need, put it in Hira, because if you can plug in any database backend you want, and everyone can actually add the host name or the VIOS name or something like that. Um, and Puppet is really just grabbing the data and executing it. So what you would do in the profiles is you have three profiles for this. Um, you have yeah, probably two profiles. Um, both include the Apache, and both really um, grab the data about the actual implementation of the vhost and stuff like that from Hira. Um, some people even go that far that they have a Hira hash where they really put in all configurations they need and have a very generic install Apache vhost um, profile where they just pull the Hira hash and then create the, all the resources that are in this hash. I wouldn't encourage you to do so, but it's possible. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, about generic Apache modules um, and how to configure it. Um, I don't know, have you heard about um, Puppet's data binding? Okay. Um, so in Puppet, starting with version 3, um, all class parameters are pulled from Hira. So, um, for example, Puppet goes like, if it runs, it checks, okay, is in the actual include or when we create the class, are there any parameters? If no, it uses the default ones, it pulls from Hira. If there are no values in Hira, then it goes to actually use the ones you coded. So Hira is always higher prioritized than the default implementation of the module. 
So for your Apache application, what you would do is just overwrite the Apache double point double point params double point double points names whatever, um, and then when the Apache module is included, all those default values you configured in Hira would be used. Yes, some people use a separate hierarchy for profiles, but um, I would rather, I always encourage people to use it with roles. Because of on one server, you have one Apache configuration, but you could have several profiles. So if you start structuring by profile, um, yeah, Hira wouldn't really know what way to go. But with role, it's just one-to-one. -one. So you can really say, okay, this is one configuration, use this. Um, and then some people really go with, yeah, and you can really do it as you like, but um, try to keep it simple because of um, also Hira is really looking up every value in all files all the time. So you, I don't know how you configure Puppet, but if you say, okay, run every 15 minutes, um, then you have a hierarchy with, I don't know, 10, 15 layers. You're really killing your, your drives because of um, it's so much IO action to actually just open the files. An alternative could be to put it in a tempfs or to put it into the RAM. This solves a lot of performance issues with Puppet, but still it, Puppet always opens up all the hierarchy files until it finds the value it's looking for. And especially if you're using default values from the classes, um, yeah, it's a lot of lookups. So really try to keep the hierarchy very small to be once readable, second, easily and perform like in a high performance possible by Puppet. Any other questions? Then that would actually be it, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah? Oh, okay. Hmm? Yes. Um, I don't know if I have... Do I have Sublime here? Where is my... Where are my editors? This is weird. Um, so since we have some time, I can just see if I can find an editor and we can just do it like this. Oh. Okay, I don't find any real editor right now, so we just do it in Word. Um, <laughs> um, uh, come on. Also. Okay, so in the hierarchy you would have um, roles slash um, role name. In front you would, most people do something like node or server name to really get specific. Um, some people also add a layer for um, network segment. I wouldn't encourage you to use profile there because of um, you could use you could have several profiles in one server, and this is a way Puppet couldn't figure out what actual way to go. Because if you need one-on-one -on -one, uh, higher lookup, it's just one file in this layer, so no idea where to go. So roles is really uh, a one-on-one -on -one matching. People always use or often use, depending on network layout, use network segments because if they have their own dedicated DHCP service or NTP service in the actual segments. Really depends on your architecture. Um, and then you really have role, role name. And some people really add something like application. Um, no, not really. Like this should really be, um, is really a good start for a hierarchy to actually use. Um, on the bottom, some people have not uh, always used hum something like common to have some default configurations, um, but a four four layers is really quite performant, um, and it should really cover all your needs. And 
The important thing to know is if you have several backends like YAML, you have eYAML, maybe another database, Puppet will use the, the order of the actual backends and then look up all the, the segments in all databases as soon, until it finds something. So really try to keep it small to really don't kill your Puppet masses. On the other way, like the alternative would really be if you need it, you need to really scale up the Puppet masters. Some people also uh, skip the network segment and create their own Puppet Master for, the, for this segment and deploy other different code. It's another way to do it. Yes. So the containment logic is really essential for creating Puppet modules. Um, So implementing this pattern is really um, about actual structuring a code and then structuring Hira because of um, the point is you don't, to be honest, you don't need this. You don't even need Puppet if you just want to spin up a computer. Use Ansible, you're quicker. Um, if you really want to manage your infrastructure, so keep it running once the servers are running, use Puppet because of it's a state machine. For example, I don't know if any one of you dealt with PCI requirements or um, the Bankenfinanzaufsicht in Germany, a lovely um, institution about controlling banks. Um, they have requirements like they need every change to be monitored and locked on a machine. So you could use Puppet to actually just implement all the files on the machine and Puppet will give you a notice and to actually change the configuration back to its desired state. Uh, so this way you can really ease your, your server monitoring because a puppet will take care that it looks as, as expected, as certified, and it will also keep track of what changed. So you have a really good hook and you can use alerting systems that if something changed, you can really look into this stuff. Um, yeah, so if you really want to keep your, application, uh, your systems monitored, set up, you also want to deploy changes, maybe deploy applications using um, deploy applications. Puppet is a great way because of it's really constantly running, but just changing what needs to be changed. So for files, it's checking MD5 sums. Uh, for RPMs, it's checking the installed versions. Um, for dev packages, the same. So you can really just say, okay, maybe if you want to update the application, you can just tell Puppet to install the newer version of the actual application package, and Puppet will do so as soon as it's, as it's running. Um, some people also use a combination of Puppet and Ansible to actually trigger Puppet on the node. So they use Ansible as a remote execution script, but then use Puppet to actually deploy the code because of it's more generic. And for example, in Ansible, I think they just implemented a package um, abstraction, but to date they had just, if you want to install an RPM, you need to ins use the RPM specification. If you want to install DEP, you need DEP. If you have a hit or if you have a very different network and you have several types of machines, it's very hard with Ansible. It at least used to be with Puppet. It's very it's abstracted on a very high level. You just tell I need this file and I need this package, and Puppet takes care of it. Whatever is needed to actually do it. Um, with other frameworks, you really need to code what's going to happen then. But um, yeah, because of Puppet is so generic, really consider or take some time to really figure out how it's actually coded and really try at least you can invent your own framework it's just one way to do it it proved to be really good so if you want to do the puppet certification this is going to be asked as well uh, so they have quite a lot of questions about this rules profiles pattern actually in the certification program um, but yeah, spend some time actually thinking about what you're going to be to do, uh, do be doing. Otherwise, you will start redoing your entire puppet stuff um, every other year. Yep, that's it, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> if you have any other questions, I will be kickboarding or something else all around the floors all day. Uh, so you probably will run into me.